Welcome to Enough Rope. Later in the show, they're the very opposite of Australian Idol, those fabulous sisters from the Waifs. There is no bingo! Tonight, I have been privileged enough to interview a great Roman leader, a great military leader who had one of the best private armies in history. He earned three military triumphs, conquering all parts of the known world in his lifetime, and earned the title of Magnus, or the Grey. He was also very popular with society, and he was always called upon to save the day. I am referring to Pompey the Great, and after some extreme circumstances, Pompey has agreed to come on the show to reveal his attitude and challenges in his lifetime, and the reasons why the Republic fell. Please welcome the Imperator himself, Pompey the Great. It's really good to have you here, because it's only through written record that we know anything about you, let alone Roman history. The first thing I must ask is, what was it like to be of great authority in Rome during the Civil War era? Well, during this time, Rome was extending its power throughout various legions in the known world. Various conflicts occurred between individuals and great powers who were all fighting for power. So yes, it was a time of great power play. Probably the thing that you are most famous for is your great private army. Can you explain how you went about creating this massive force? My first real commencement in military command was under Sulla during 83 and 78 BC. During that time, I built a private army under Sulla to battle for his need. For me to lead an army at that time was quite a triumph, because not only was I under age to lead an army, but I had also never held any position in office. After your very successes under Sulla, your popularity started increasing to the point that you were more popular than Sulla. Could you explain this? Sulla was very impressed with my ability to lead an army, and after my very successes, he even gave me the title of Imperator. Before long, I was even earning triumphs. The first triumphs I earned was during the time under Sulla's command, where I overwhelmed Carbo's army. The key to that success was overwhelming his army so that they could not see any other option but to flee. Of course, earning a triumph is only something that others can give you. You can't rightfully assign a triumph to yourself. Consequently, whilst the first triumphs I earned earned me respect by other civilians, Sulla seemed to later resent my gaining of popularity. I also earned two other triumphs from conquering Quintus Sertorius of Spain and for my eastern victories against the Mirisidates. Popularity was one of the main ways to ensure success as a leader, and it was Cicero who played a large role in supporting you. Could you explain your association with him? Cicero was a great political speaker, and yes, he did a lot to support me. Gaius Pompeius, a man never has had, has not now, and never will have a rival in courage, wisdom and renown, has given to me as one private friend to another, what he has given to the state as a whole, safety, security and dignity. Probably the most important thing he ever did was to help pass the law which would allow me to have complete control over the battle against the Mercedes. I was also the person he turned to to support him during the time he was going for consulship. After you disbanded your army and became a private citizen of Rome, it seemed that you had major troubles in fitting back into society and getting bills passed by the Senate. How did a man with three triumphs and being so popular with society ended up having trouble communicating with the Senate? Unfortunately, there were many in the Senate against me. Throughout the years where I had been in military duty, I had obviously hurt many of these Senate members. Cato and Lucullus had become powerful members in the Senate, and I'd assumed that many Senate members were unhappy with my actions, and they ended up voting against me. It was such a frustrating experience, because here I am trying to pass a bill to supply grain and land to my soldiers, and I, guess, and I just could not pass it. At the stage of time, I really needed to go to drastic actions. It was around this time that various significant events started occurring which would have led to the downfall of the Republic. Do you feel that you played a part in the fall of the Republic? Well, no, of course not. Some considered me as Rome's saviour. I was the one who kept Rome safe when war came up. I was the one who helped in the defeat of Spartacus. I was the one who defeated the pirate and the Maristadates. And consequently, it was I whom the optimists turned to when there was an uprising of gangs and thugs. No, it was I who wanted the best for Rome, and I prided myself on being there to protect it. What about your private army and the first triumvirate? 
If there was any reason why I played a part in the downfall of Rome, it was because of the various other powers and influences around me and throughout my life. You might say I played a part in the corrupting of the political system by joining the First Triumvirate. Sure, I had to use my army in order to influence the Optimates by means of fear, but it was necessary to supply land to my troops. It was because of the opposition created by the Optimates which started the course of the fall of the Republic. Why was it that you chose to go into alliance with Caesar and Crassus? What were the main benefits that came to you from this coalition? As I mentioned before, it was impossible for me to pass a bill to give land to my veteran soldiers because of the great opposition and because I really wasn't that good a politician. It was then that Caesar united Crassus and me in support of Caesar's campaign for consul. The reward for my loyalty and support for Caesar was that I did manage to pass my land bill, as well as various other gains, including the earning of provinces at Spain and earning permission to govern through legates. Of course, each one of you in the triumvirate joined it in hope of getting greater benefit. What various events broke the triumvirate and the relationship between you and Caesar? Earlier on in the alliance of the first triumvirate, I married Caesar's daughter, Julia, which was a tie which kept us at ease with one another. After Caesar earned consulship and each of the triumvirate members each had their own needs met, I suppose each of us were ambitious and wanted more from this alliance, and consequently each one of us did things which put the triumvirate under pressure. It was when Crassus and Julia died that meant the triumvirate alliance was no more. Julia was the main thing keeping Caesar and I bound together in coalition. With her gone, our relationship was no longer certain. You had the opportunity to remarry into Caesar's family to renew your alliance, but you didn't. Why was that? I suppose, being all ambitious, I decided it was not in my best interest to renew the coalition between Caesar and I, because it meant we'd have to remain on similar terms. Instead, I married into the Scipio family of the Optimates alliance, which meant I had left Caesar against the Optimates. Not only was Caesar's power threatened against the Optimates, but due to the fact that the Optimates feared my power and found it necessary to rely on me for military backup, it meant I pretty much had ultimate power. Do you believe any of your family may have contributed to the fall of the Republic? In my opinion, the fall of the Republic could not have been directly my doing, because I wasn't there when it happened. In regards to my failings, I did have an issue with peers who rivaled me in power, which was why I had difficulties with Crassus, Caesar, and even Cicero. But that was my personality, and I believe it helped me overcome various challenges in my life. Of course, my biggest failure was my loss to Caesar. Because of the laws I proposed that would prosecute him if he came back to Rome, he decided to come back and take over Rome by force. For the safety of the Optimates and myself, we fled Rome in hope to unite my forces in hope to defeat Caesar. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out the way I hoped, and I died because of it. Finally, how was it that you distinguished yourself from other leaders? The reason why other leaders could never achieve true success was because they forced society to accept their views. Let's look at Caesar, for example. He wanted to be the king of Rome and be the ultimate ruler. Consequently, no one liked that decision, and he was killed because of it. Crassus also would have wanted great power, and instead of being noble about getting it, he tried various ploys to try and defeat me as a way of getting power. Myself, on the other hand, was popular not because I wanted to be, but it was society who wanted me to be popular. I had given many poor people land after their commitment to me in my various battles. I was a great leader and I was respected. This is how I was successful. The question about what would have happened if I had defeated Caesar is a fairly complicated to answer. For all I could know, I too could have been assassinated just because of the power I would have earned. On the other hand, Rome could have come to some prosperous times after that. I would have made life for the civilians better by supplying land, united Rome with allied countries for trade. Civilization would have been so much better under my command. Bombi, it's been great having you on the show.